this video, we're going to discuss a two-tailed hypothesis test for population proportion. So let's go ahead and read through the example first. A researcher believes that the percentage of college students that engage in smoking has changed in the past 10 years. 10 years ago, 20% of college students smoked. A random sample of 80 college students found that 25% smoke. Test the researchers claim that the current percentage is different than 20%. Use a significance level of 0.05. All right, so first let me go ahead and define P, the population proportion. So the population, so let me go ahead and write this. The population proportion of college, college smokers. All right, and what I'm um, building a hypothesis test for uh, is whether or not P the population proportion is equal to 20%, right? So the null hypothesis will always have the equal sign. So P equals 20%, right? That's the claim. The claim is, is the um, current percentage or is the current proportion of college smokers, is it different than 20%, right? So is the proportion different than 0.2? So the alternative then would be P does not equal 0.2. This is not a directional test. We're just interested in knowing is P different from 0.2 or is P still equal to 0.2, all right? So this is the normal alternative hypothesis, right? So since we have the not equal sign in the alternative hypothesis, this is a two-tailed test. Okay, so that's step one. Define your normal alternative hypothesis. Step two, calculate your test statistic, all right? So let's see, our test statistic. P hat minus P divided by the square root of P Q over N. Okay, so P hat, the sample proportion. All right, let's look for it. 10 years ago, 20% smoked. Random sample of 80 college students found that 25% smoke. There we go. That 25% is from the sample, so that's the sample proportion. 0.25 minus P. Go to your null hypothesis. What is P equal? P equals 0.2. Okay, divided by the square root of P times Q, Q is one minus P, so that'd be 0 0.8, divided by N, the sample size, which is 80. All right. So this would be 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.0447. Okay, so the test statistic, round to two decimal places, 1.12. Remember, all z values you round to two decimal places. All right, so let's go ahead and go on to step three. Let's do calculating p value. All right, so let me go ahead and draw this out. So we have our p value. Well, we have this is the distribution of the test statistic. Okay, so the distribution of test statistic given. The null hypothesis is true. All right. And the value of our test statistic is 1.12. All right. So the p-value will be the probability that we will observe that value or value that's more extreme. Now, so extreme means further into the tail. But since um, this is a two-sided test, we also need to be concerned with the other side, the other tail over here. So we'll do negative 1.12, and the p-value will actually be the area of both of these tails. Okay. Actually, since this is a symmetric distribution centered on zero, uh, these um, areas will be the same. So I could calculate the area over here to the left, because that's easier to calculate, because the table gives the area to the left. And then just multiply that by 2, and that'll tell me what my p-value is. That's the easiest thing to do, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to do two times whatever value is in the table for negative 1.12. Let's go ahead and pull up our table. Negative 1.12. All right, there we go. Negative 1.12. So that's 0 0.1314. 0 0.1314. Point one three one four. Okay, that's the area in this tail. So I do two times it 
to get the area in both tails. All right, so that'd be 0 0.2628. All right, so there we go, there's our p-value. Now the p-value is greater than alpha, right? In this question, they tell us what alpha is. They say use a significance level of 0.05. So p-value is greater than 0.05. So that means we're going to have to fail to reject this null hypothesis. It seems reasonable that 1.12 uh, is a reasonable test statistic value um, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. It seems reasonable the null hypothesis may be true. All right. Another way you could have done step three, you would, would do one or the other. You could have used critical values. All right. So uh, I'll just mention how to do this. Um, to use one or the other, I think p-values are the best, but you could have used p critical values to come to the same conclusion. Now, if you're using critical values, you'll start with your distribution of, of the test statistic, given HO is true. Okay. All right. And then since this is a two-sided test, we'll have two critical values, and we'll need to split alpha into the two tails. Okay, so instead of having 0.05 in just one tail, as we would in a left or right-sided test, since it's a two-sided test, we need alpha divided by 2 in both tails. So in this tail, there would be 0.025 and 0.025 in this tail, right? Because 0.05 is alpha. Remember, alpha is 0.05, which was given in the problem. Okay, so... Um, oh. I should write not z alpha divided by 2, but I should write z, the negative z critical value. So usually that's noted with a z sub c for critical, and then z sub c critical. So they're the same value, just this one's negative. All right. It's actually it's easier to look up the negative one because I just need to look up uh, 0.025, uh, what z value has the area behind a 0.025. So let's go ahead and look that up. So I go to my table and I'm looking for where is the area 0.025, okay? So 0.025, there it is. That's ne negative 0.96, all right? So the negative critical value is negative 1.96. So the positive critical value is positive 1.96. Okay, so if our test statistic is in either tail, we'll reject the null hypothesis, right? What is our test statistic value, though? One point, so our test statistic value is 1.12, which is not in the, it's not larger than 1.96, it's not smaller than negative 1.96, so it's in this region of possible values for, for where the it seems reasonable that the null hypothesis is indeed true. Okay, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Our test statistic value is not in these rejection regions based off of this critical, these critical values. All right, so finally, our last step, the state our conclusion. So we've, we've determined that we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And um, so remember, what is our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis is that p equals 0.2, and the alternative was that p no longer equals 0.2. So we failed to reject the null, which means um, there's not enough evidence to support the alternative. So that's what I'll write next. Um, there is not enough evidence to suggest that the proportion of college smokers college smokers is different than point two. 